Today we're going to be looking at the best players from every major statistical category, as in points, rebounds, assists, deals, and blocks, and then some extra ones that I included to make it more fun. These are partly based on who was the best this season, but more based on overall who's the best in every category. So let's get into it with the best dunker. Now there's two ways to look at this, and the first is with in-game dunks. The top three players with the most in-game dunks this season was Clint Capella, Giannis, and Rudy Gobert. It's not surprising to see Capella here with how he plays in the Rocket system and with most of his shots being alley-oops, dunks, or layups. It is definitely impressive seeing Giannis here though because he's got the most perimeter based style out of any of these guys and he still managed to get to the rim enough for that many dunks. And then of course Rudy Gobert isn't a surprise either because the man basically lives under the rim. But what is surprising is the fact that himself and Giannis broke the record for most dunks in a season this year since they've been recorded in the year 2000. The previous record was 270 set by Dwight Howard in his Orlando days in 2008. That record seemed unbreakable for a while so it's crazy to see that both of these guys were able to break it this year. But the other way to look at this category is for the best actual dunks. And it easily goes to Zach Levine. And with the performances we've seen him put on, there's not much competition other than Aaron Gordon. And with Levine throwing down the Instagram challenge for our rematch, and with Aaron saying he'll be in next year's dunk contest, we may be able to see Aaron take over this spot after next year. Passing. This spot a couple of years ago would normally go to Chris Paul, but times have changed. And if we're talking assists, we gotta give it to Russell Westbrook, who was surprisingly the only player to record double digits and assists this year, and as we know has done that for the past few years. But if we're talking about just passing in general, and finding players for open looks and getting the ball to them, we gotta give it to Nikola Jokic. And this is the first time in a long time, and maybe one of the only times ever, we can give this title to a big man because he's extremely good in the half court drawing the double team and finding players to kick the ball out to. Rebounding. The best rebounder in the league isn't even a question. Some people may say Westbrook because he's only 6 foot 4 and averaged 11 a game this season, which places him 10th in the league for rebounds per game and is the only other guard other than Ben Simmons even in the top 60 rebounders this year. But even with all that, the spot's still gotta go to Andre Drummond. The man averaged 15.6 a game this season, 16 a game last year, and hasn't averaged under 13 a game since his rookie season. So Russ may be smaller, but if you put him and Andre Drummond up against each other, I'm taking Drummond every time. And while we're here, we should look at offensive rebounds, where unsurprisingly Drummond also led the league with over 5 a game. The man spent his whole career on this Pistons team, and you gotta think that if nothing happens soon, it's gotta be time to get him on a real playoff team and see how good he really is. And then with defensive rebounding, it goes to Joel Embiid, who put up 11 a game this year. Mid-range. When I think of mid-range shooting, guys like Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook, CJ McCollum, DeMar DeRozan, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Kevin Durant come to mind. But the discussion for the spot isn't even close. Because we've got Kawhi Leonard who made an impressive 49% of his mid-range shots, but only shot 5 a game. DeMar DeRozan shot 7.4 a game, but only made 44% of his. LA shot 7.6 per contest, but made a poor 32%. And then we have Kevin Durant who blows everyone out of the water, shooting 8.1 a game and making 50% of them. He's got the most attempts and the highest percentage, which is why he easily takes a spot. The man said, it's easy for me, start at the top of the key, Left hand side, dribble, dribble, stop and pull up. He said it helps that he can go all the way to the rim, so when they're expecting him to, he makes a quick stop and pulls up and shoots. And it really helps that no one can jump high enough to even block his jump shot. His height may make it an unfair advantage for this category, but he deserves it for being the only 7 footer that can shoot like that. 3 pointers. The best 3 point percentage goes to the 2019 3 point contest champion Joe Harris, who was shooting 47% halfway through the season and shockingly kept that pace up all the way to the end of the year shooting over 5 a game. He's a spot up shooter for Brooklyn that's great at coming off screens and knocking down the open shot. But if we're talking about 3 pointers in general, we all know that it goes to Steph. Drives to the basket. This one's actually a lot closer than I would have thought, and it's between James Harden and DeMar DeRozan. I would have thought Harden had this spot by a long shot, but that wasn't the case, because from my Harvard level research of Google, I came up with this info. James Harden drove to the basket 19 times a game this season, compared to DeRozan's at 18. Harden attempted 9 shots off of a drive on 52% shooting, and DeMar attempted 7.3 on 53%. The difference here is that Harden got 14 points a game from these attempts, and DeRozan only got 10. So the spot goes to James, but not by much. Steals. 
again with this one a few years ago it would have gone to Chris Paul who led the league in steals six out of seven years at one point up until 2014 and he still finished among the top five nearly every year since then. But for the past five years, it's been someone different every year. It could really go a bunch of different ways, but we'll give it to Paul George, who led the league this season with 2.2 a game, and finished second last year behind Victor Oladipo. Defense. This is a weird one because there's Rudy Gobert who won the award the past two seasons, but was really out of the discussion for most of this year. He still has made it as a finalist for the award though, along with Giannis and Paul George, who were the real ones in the discussion for most of this season. But the weird part is that Kawhi Leonard wasn't even in talks for the entire regular season. I think with him sitting out his last year in San Antonio, people forgot just how good defensively he was. He's already a former two-time defensive player of the year, and especially after seeing him recently, I think it's safe to say that he's overall the best defender in the league. He can guard anyone in the NBA and played a big part in stopping Giannis the past few games of their series. And there's not a player in the league that Kawhi can't slow down. He's definitely going down as one of the all-time great defenders. I will say though that I think Giannis is right behind Kawhi for his ability to really guard all five positions. And while we're already on the category of defense, let's look at blocks. Miles Turner led the league this season with an impressive 2.7 blocks a game, and he's definitely got the overall defense to one day be a defensive player of the year on his own. And then there's Mitchell Robinson blocking 2.4 shots a game and only playing 20 minutes a game. I mean, he could definitely take the spot in a year or two if he gets more minutes and keeps things up. But for now, the spot still goes to Rudy Gobert who's consistently been the best shot blocker over the past few years. And I mean it's no surprise because he's got one of the tallest standing reaches in NBA history, right behind Mo Bamba and probably soon Taco Fall. But you combine his reach with his 32 inch vertical, and that's what gives him a max vertical reach of over 12 feet. So, so it's easy to see how he blocks so many shots. And until somebody proves that they can block as many shots as Gobert for multiple seasons, he's gonna stay the best in this category. Turnovers. This one goes to James Harden and Russell Westbrook. And it's no surprise that two of the guys that have the ball in their hands the most also have the most turnovers. And I think it goes for both of these guys and their teams that if they want to win more, especially in the playoffs next year, they'll definitely have to have less than five turnovers a game, but also hold on to the ball less and get their teammates more involved. Westbrook took a step towards that this season, and I'd be surprised if Harden doesn't do the same next year. Field goal percentage. Rudy Gobert is coming in a lot on these different categories. And again, he takes this one, very slightly over Clint Capella, because Rudy led the league in field goal percentage this season at almost 67%. Last season, Capella led the league, and the year before that, Gobert finished third and Clint finished fourth. But over the past three seasons, Rudy Gobert's field goal percentage is 0.3% higher than Capella's. 0.3! So he gets the slight edge. Scoring. This season, James Harden was the best scorer in the NBA. But if we had to pick who the best scorer in general was, I think everyone would agree it's Kevin Durant. Harden scores with threes, drives to the baskets, and free throws. And the fact that he put up 36 a game with just those three things is that much more impressive. But KD can score on you in any way from anywhere on the court. Whether it's mid-range, threes, layups, dunks, or posting up. It's what's helped him consistently be the league's best scorer since his OKC days. He's a four-time scoring champion and has only averaged under 25 a game for one season in his career when he was a rookie. Free throws. Malcolm Brogdon led the league this season in percentage with 92.8%, which puts him as the best this year. But overall, you gotta think that Steph Curry has to be the best in the league. He made 91.6% of his this season and shot twice as many as Brogdon. And every year he consistently shoots one of the top two or three percentages in the league. He's the best three point shooter, free throw shooter, and pure shooter out there. Double doubles. Double doubles aren't stats that are really kept up with too often anymore. But I am here today to tell you that the leader for the season was Andre Drummond, who had 69 of them. He only didn't record 10 points and 10 rebounds in 10 games that he played this year. The man's an almost guaranteed double-double. Triple doubles. We all know this one. It's Russell Westbrook who had 34 of them and will probably pretty soon be the all-time leader if things keep going how they have for him. But that's gonna wrap up this video. If you enjoyed this and found out anything new, or I was able to change your opinion on who the best in any of these categories was, definitely leave a like, comment and let me know, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.